us on stage, make some noise for Miss Monica Rio. We love you. David Luchengo. Hey guys, is it cool if I join you? Absolutely. Absolutely. You guys are awesome. Yes. Guys, yes. yes. you are awesome. We are but a reflection of you, lovely fine folks. How are y'all doing tonight? I was feeling tired until I walked out here. Yeah, and you guys. Energized. Yes. You just infused us with energy. That's right, that's right. Yeah. That is the OH power that we bring to yeah. the table. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? OH! Yeah. Hey guys, guys, A H. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A H. We don't. Uh, 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 I am just testing it. You, you never know. No, no, no. That was a very Shakasha sort of move. I like that. Um, okay, so we are big fans of all of you in this little ditty of a show, manga series, anime called My Hero Academia. Yeah. The question that I must start off with is you guys are pioneers when it comes to voiceover work, specifically when it comes to anime. Were you early adopters? Were you fans of anime before you got into the business? Or was this something that kind of grew as you were working? That's a good question. That's a good that's what I can. That, is a, that is a good opener. Thank man. you. I Thank take you. that. Thank you. When I, I started in anime in 1856. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Dinosaurs <laughs> roamed the earth. Japan didn't even exist yet. It was actually just Pangea. Uh, the, the, the dinosaurs. Hadn't yet. The, when I started at Funimation in like before your parents uh, were in elementary school, um, the there were like four videotapes at Blockbuster you could pick up. There was. Uh, there, all the anime that had ever been made was there. It was Fist of the North Star yes. and Akira, yes. Ghost in the Shell, and the fourth one. I can't remember what it Ninja was. Ninja Scroll. Ninja Scroll. That's I, knew, I, was, yeah. Yeah, I worked at that blockbuster at the yeah. time. I know exactly. What so there were four titles. That was it. So yes, I was a huge fan of every single anime I've ever seen. <laughs> I love that, I love that. So, since we're moving beyond the dinosaur times that Chris was in, what about you guys? We all into... <laughs> I mean, I was prehistoric. Not quite dinosaurs, okay, but right, right. <laughs> after work. Post historic. There yes, there we go. <laughs> um, my brother was a huge anime fan, nice. um, and my family is from Spain, and so he doesn't... very well so I used to have to wake up early in the morning to translate a little show called Las Bolas de Dragon <laughs> and I joke that I played every character in Dragon Ball before I was That's ever a part amazing. of Dragon Ball. But yeah so my anime history runs deep and yeah I was a huge fan okay. especially once he got into the stuff like we were talking about like Ghost in the Shell and Akira I'm like of course, of course. Do you know that Monica actually started, Monica and I started around the same time, but we were on our own island. I'm younger. We were on our own island in Dallas, just totally insulated yes. in our own little bubble, not really realizing what we were doing. And I do remember one time there was a, a I was sitting in my boss's office and he had a videotape of this show called like Cutie Honey or something like that. <laughs> and I picked it up as I was talking to him because he was boring and I looked at the back. <laughs> And I saw the name Jessica Calvello, and I, you guys, maybe you know who she is, but she was the lead in that show. I'm like, I grew up with her. And then I look, I'm like, AD Vision. I'm like, that's interesting. Turns out there was this whole island of people that existed outside of Funimation in that we Houston. didn't even know of. In Houston, just south of us. This strange island called Houston <laughs> yeah. is very far away. So Justin, a couple years ago, when you got into like, you got into business. Yeah, yeah, I'm 15 years old. And, uh, Very mature. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. Uh, no, I, I grew up loving anime, y'all. It was, it was, it was the thing. Like, uh, I was, I remember being in third grade and like, I gotta get home to watch some Dragon Ball. Uh, and uh, we were all like, why do they have long hair now? This is crazy. Um, 
I, yeah, uh, I, I, I'm still a fan. My appreciation has really only grown since. I grew up loving, like, uh, Samurai Champloo and, yeah. and um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, anime rules, I always knew it. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, my story's kind of similar. I, I didn't, I came across anime as a kid not knowing, I didn't have a ton of exposure to it. Mm -hmm. um, I was, again, when did you start in Houston? Or do you want to say that? You don't have to say that. No, it's I started, fine. I started in Houston in like 2000... <laughs> 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. so, oh, baby. But before, then, before that, yeah, I, I was watching anime and didn't know that I was really watching it. But it. And then I took a, you know, I moved to New York and I did a bunch of other stuff. Work, continued to work for ADV. But then, yeah, then I found it again, working in it, right. and have, it, I was just talking to people this weekend about how, <laughs> when I first started, there was always a following, there was always like a hardcore, um, you know, group that like was new it and was into it right. and was for it, and then and to see how I mean I've I've been doing it for 20 years to see how it's grown and what it is now, I, I just it's awesome to be a part of. It's awesome. We are, we are so happy that you are a part of it. Uh, the life and, and energy that you guys bring to the plethora of characters on your resume, like it's kind of crazy that you guys do so much work. But this one particular series, this little school thing that we are uh, so such big fans of, um, I think in, in terms of pop culture, um, superheroes at schools has like this resonance space, right? You know, obviously we got the X Men and their their you know stories and, and things like that. But with my hero, it's something that's almost bigger, like global in a way that X Men didn't start off with, and you guys did. Did you feel uh, this global presence with the stories and concepts that you guys were trying to get across with your characters? Gosh, you have such great questions. <laughs> you know, I think one of the, I think one of the different things about this is this idea that the whole universe has, or that the, the, the people in the universe, or nine, what is it, 99% of them, right. have quirks of yes. some kind. Yes. And so, I don't know, I think, what is it? 80. 80? Wow, wow. Oh, you God. God. You just know. It, was it went down over the time. It was a test. It was a yeah. test. Uh, but like, the fact that that's the, that's the world that you're in, and then right. you've got people that use it to pursue like this pro hero thing. Right. I think that sets it apart in some way. I don't know, I don't know. There's something about it to me that roots that into that world that uh, yeah. I like that okay, so the X-Men mm -hmm. super cool, right? Like they're super cool, super slick. I love that the my hero it, it's quirks. Everybody's quirky and weird and has their own yeah, the word silly quirks. little like power that makes them vomit or does weird stuff and to me, that's what's so en endearing about it, is that they're not cool. Like, there's some cool kids, but it's like, you can see yourself in any single one of them. Personally, Aoyama, Naval Laser, woo! Hey. <laughs> totally get it. And like, they have a lot of room to grow. Like, they're not necessarily, like, always good at using what they have at the beginning. Like, and I know that that's a, a trope in other things, but yeah, it's hard to answer that question about what makes this one because you know they're they're using hero culture sure. and, and the stuff that we love, but somehow there's uh, yeah there's a difference. Um, there's this everyman sort of quality about it. Like anybody can be a hero thing. That's kind of an undercurrent of the whole thing that mm -hmm. I think is attractive. Of course. Yeah, Horikoshi Sensei, the the manga cop for this, he just I think the thing that makes it very special too is that his writing style does seem to be very international. It, it, it has an anime vibe to it, and it's clearly anime, but it has a very Western feel to it as well, which I think made it like even more interesting for everybody. And there, it's kind of crossing over to comic book artists and things like that in the United States who I see, like you wouldn't normally see pictures of anime in the, like a comic book artist's uh, booth, but now he's got pictures of All Might there, and like, the, because it was very clear that Horikoshi was very inspired by comic book artists right. as well, so right. I think he just did a wonderful job of bridging the, like, the West and the East really right. well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Justin, you want to add anything well, to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it also kind of hit at just the right time. Like, True. anime was on its way up, and, and we were right in the middle of Marvel Mania. I guess we still are. Um, and people were ready for more, like, clever hero stories. They wanted, uh, they wanted more of that Marvel action, and I think uh, that this kind of 
satiated a lot of people that were, were, were craving something late. And it's also kind of clever. The spins on the, the common tropes of, of comic books get kind of turned on their head pretty often. So I think, you know, for, for longtime readers, that's, that's a big win. We are going to open it up for you guys to ask some questions. People like, people like. Whoa. <laughs> what I said. Do you not hurt yourself? Oh, well, they are continuing this way. Uh, considering how long the show has been, has been on, okay. the whole room is like in line right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. The whole front row. Just just just, um, considering how long the, the show has been on, yeah. what sort of difference do you bring in your performance from the beginning the that you bring down. now for your characters? Lord, your questions. Questions. I'm sorry. No, so, oh, okay, okay. what is the difference between when you from the started? Yeah, yeah. I think, I mean, I know for Sue Yu, like she's grown so much. She's definitely gained. Uh, she started off a little self conscious, a, a little concerned about her what people would think of her quirks. Right. And as we go along, she's much more confident in her choices. Um, but yeah, I feel like the strength and the confidence are there. Nice. Yeah, that's such a hard question to answer. I, I'm probably going to be sort of convoluted in my answer, but I once had an acting teacher tell me, you know, you can't play your character all at once. Like, the first time someone sees your character, they learn about, it's just like when you, when you meet someone for the first time, you know that you, you, maybe you vibe with them, you like them, but you don't know them truly what makes them up until you know them in several different situations. And so I always took that because I, I remember as a younger actor, I always had this idea of like, you know, I gotta, I gotta nail the, the thing has to be exactly right from the moment I walk on a stage or get in a booth or run in front of the camera. And um, so I say that to say that it's almost like I've been on this journey with Todoroki just nice. kind of taking me along yeah. in a way. Like I'm there for each moment and I'm trying to do the best I can and be as truthful and, but, but so it's so different from first season to the second season when he comes to that fight with Midoriya in, this, in the um, sports festival. Yes. And uh, that growth, it's, it's just, it's almost inherent in what we do. We show up as actors, we do the thing and as the character grows, you're asked to grow with it and you just do. It's like when you see a pilot episode of a, of a television show, mm -hmm. and, you, and maybe it's a show you love, right? So you watch four seasons, and if you go back and you watch that pilot, it's crazy. you'll see those actors, they're good and it's great, it's not a negative, right. but you see them sort of negotiating the thing, you what know? What a good way to describe that. Yeah. yeah, and like I feel like that's what it's been for me. Now I go in the booth, and even if it's you know one line or 15 minutes, I feel kind of at home. I'm like, I know this guy. I know what this is. Let's do that. I can't wait for this. Justin, Chris, it's. I mean, you you encapsulated it pretty well. I mean, this is this is the first really big show, like the really the first show that people have absolutely gone nuts for. That has been done in the era of uh, Funimation Crunchyroll simul dub kind of thing, where they started uh, squishing the time between it, the time it was released in Japan, which when I started was about 20 years from the time it ran in Japan to when we aired it in America, <laughs> to yeah, literally two weeks. Um, and so the, the, you're getting this instant feedback, and what's really crazy, and it's, it's hard for directors these days, is that they don't know who to cast on what necessarily, because you're like, well, I want to use Michael Tatum, but what if his character dies, <laughs> and, I, and I need him for something else, right? Like so. Uh, it's it's been it's it's been a challenge because you don't really know what's gonna happen. It's really right. I love it. If you guys don't mind, let's open up to your yeah. friends here. Hello, friend. How are we doing tonight? Hi, I'm I'm awesome. This is great. Awesome. Um, so my question is, it's for all of you. Um, which of any of the villains' ideologies do you guys like like or relate to the most? Whoa. <laughs> Existential. Let's go. Ideologies. <laughs> Yeah. You're asking us to endorse a villain. Yeah. <laughs> I never said kill people. Um, I, I, I will say that the one that's interesting to me is Stan. Yeah. Uh, As a Shigaraki enjoyer. Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> too many hands, too many hands, too many hands. I didn't know that that was the thing I didn't like until Shigaraki, too many hands. <laughs> There's someone that's cosplaying that right now that's leaving the room, like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
Chris, I'm so sorry. My fault. My fault. They're building arc surgery. Uh, I, I really dig Toga's vibe. She's just out there to make friends, put herself out there, kind of, you know, make the squad. I dig it. I second the Toga, but with less needles. Chris? I, I don't relate to villains. <laughs> Well played. Well played. Majin Buu. Majin Buu. Wait, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow's conversation. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. Hello. This is a question for everyone. In a universe where your character doesn't have their quirk, what job do you think they would have? Okay. Yeah. Lifeguard? Great job. That does work. That does work. Mine? I think, um, psychotherapist. <laughs> uh, uh, a used car salesman. <laughs> I mean, what is he without that? <laughs> oh, I would buy so many cars from All Might. Yeah. You are here, my friend. <laughs> oh, dude, if he said that, I'd be like, yes, I want this car. <laughs> No down payments, no payments till July, 1995. No. I love it, I love it. Like a comic appraiser down at the chance. <laughs> like, seven. Dude. I like it. Look how well we know our yeah. characters. <laughs> this is awesome. Great question. Thank you. So Thank Thank you. you. Hello. Hi. If you could bring one of your other characters that you've voiced into the My Hero Universe. Mm. You bring one of the other characters that I you voice. Luck fighting Bakugo. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Let's get Luck in there, wreak some havoc. We'll, we'll beat up Bakugo. That'll be great. Yeah. Somebody looks put upon. Dave, how you feeling? Oh God, I don't know. I need a minute. I need a minute. Okay. That's, all right, all right. that's all. so. I'd love Yami and Black Clover to join. I, is one of the teachers. He's like, so uh, how are the bathrooms in this school? <laughs> okay, if you're bringing Yami, then I'm bringing Mariliona just so I can <laughs> kick your butt. I mean, I'm bringing Mariliona just so I can kick your butt. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna go slightly more obscure and bring Usui from Maid Sama. Yeah. Well, crap, then I have to bring Mariliona and Mizuki because. <laughs> yeah. That would be, I don't know, he'd be a troublemaker. He would, he would, yeah. yeah. A little bit of troublemaker. I like that. Great question. Hello, friend. Hello. Um, so, I want to be a voice actor, but not like professionally like you guys. Do you have any small tips for like people starting out or people like that want to get into it that have like no money? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to sound so silly, but just go with me. Okay. <laughs> Don't be That's afraid, they're just actors. They're like lower than low. Uh, yeah, they're not We're really There's really nothing to be respected there. Yeah, I, did, I, I do theater, so like, great, I, great. I could get on stage and be like, whatever, but like, at the same time, I'm like, I don't... Who communicates with people? Anymore? I just say that because there's so many people that are like, I want to be a voice actor. I'm like, cool, are you taking any classes? And they're like, I don't want to be an actor. So, but you're saying, you're saying you, you don't want to... You, you don't have a goal to ultimately do it professionally. Right. I, you just want to do it as like it's, something it's that you enjoy. It's also a fear of like, I don't think that I could make a living as a, as a voice actor. Valid fear. Valid fear. <laughs> I mean, I actually have a lot of respect for the way you're approaching this. I Indeed. Mean, because so many people uh, have high, like really, really high expectations. I, I do believe though that if you have experience on stage, you have as much of a chance as anybody else as, to get into this. And the beautiful right. thing about voice acting is that you don't have to be around that many people. You don't, <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would recommend that, you know, learn to record yourself really well at home. It's a fun hobby. Record yourself doing things. Find a community online or somewhere. There's a lot of people doing, like, a bridge series. Or there's really good groups out there of people who want to be voice actors that just submit their things for people to review and um, and you don't have to buy really expensive yeah. equipment in order to record yourself well at home it it doesn't really matter at first just get used to hearing yourself and headphones and, uh, and yeah, then you, it, once you feel confident you can get on like 
voices.com or voices123 and there's no judgment there. People might find you, uh, your voice on that too and who knows where you'll go. Yeah, and you can, like even just on your phone, whatever phone, you know, you can make a recording. Just do that. You can pick up something, uh, I don't know, anything, any piece of dialogue or verbiage and read that. And just play with that and see how it sounds. Um, you know, you can get, and you can get like used plug and play microphone that you can plug into a phone and you know, um, but yeah, yeah, I think, and I think, I just want to second what, what Chris said is that it's so true. If you, you know, you know, if you, you never know where it could take you or where you might find yourself. I mean, look at us. We didn't plan on this, but here we are. <laughs> Have more confidence in your, in yourself though, because you see, you're clearly asking this question in front of 300 people. <laughs> like you, you have. I mean, you can't be that scared of people. You seem like a decent human being. Like, give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so Great much. question. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, guys. My name is Jalen. Awesome. And I just want to let you know that it is my birthday, and this is the best gift ever. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's also my, it's also my very first con ever. Happy oh birthday. Birthday. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a really simple one. Um, if you could bring one quirk from the show into the real world, what would it be? And why? Like for me, I want to just continuously make things, you know? I wouldn't have to go like DoorDash or anything. <laughs> 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 it's very present. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. I just... <laughs> I'll be at home. I'm really hungry, and I don't want to do anything to get this food. Like, not even get on an app. <laughs> now all I can think is Momo's. Like, that's what I want. I want to be able to make quirk. I mean, I want to be able to make stuff. You can just make whatever you want. I just kind of want Ida's quirk, because, like, if I'm uncomfortable or anxious, I can just be like, <laughs> just bail out, you know? I think I want like Minetta's quirk because then ev every what everyone would leave you alone and nobody would talk to you because <laughs> everybody hates Minetta, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking like Sato's quirk, you know, sugar rush or or any of the food quirks because I'm very food motivated already. <laughs> so it'd be nice if there were like a benefit to me. <laughs> You know, Sarah's quirk might be kind of fun because then you always have tape. You know, you're always looking for tape. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You always have tape on you. I'm glad you brought up Minetta because I'll tell you just a secret of the, a, a secret inside the My Hero panels. Um, there's typically a question where someone uh, says, you know, who's your favorite villain? And uh, we didn't, it was the ideology might have thrown us, but usually when someone says that, we'll go along and then someone will say, Minetta. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, glad, glad we brought Minetta. Thank you so much, guys. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hello. 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 Thank you guys so much for your time, sincerely, including the MC. You deserve some respect. Yes. Yes. Much respect. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my question for you guys is, I feel like you're coaches of your own characters, so are there any ever any instances where you're up at night thinking of ways you can add to a character, or do you kind of like turn off that thinking once you're out of the studio? Ooh. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> what questions, y'all? <laughs> I think it, it's a good just sort of mental health practice for voiceover. It's like, uh, if they let you out of that booth, you probably did a fine job. You know, it's, it's not... <laughs> It's not worth losing too much sleep over. Of course I could analyze every single line I've ever done in my life. And yeah. half of them I'd probably be like, oof, you, you want that? Okay. Um, but, you know, otherwise, um, I'm, I'm proud of the work that I get to do and I'm proud to share it with everybody. It's not always flawless, but who is? What is? Um, yeah. Thanks. Um, I, it's not a thing where I'm typically, you know, up at night, yeah, it, worrying about it or something like that but there will be some times where if i have the time and it's available i'll watch uh, a subbed episode before i go into record and there will be times where i'll let that get me in my head a little bit of like oh god i love that and like there's an episode in uh, or there's a moment in season five when i won't spoil it but todoroki says a thing to his dad uh dad walks into the room they're at dinner there and he says a thing 
And I saw that episode and I was like, yes, but I can't wait to die. I can't wait to say that. Um, and so then I got, I sort of put pressure on myself for this one line. Um, there are times, I had, a, I had a, a moment a couple of weeks ago where I literally had one line in an episode. And for some reason I was recording this from home. And I did the take, it was one line. I did the take and I was about to go, oh, can I do that? I was gonna say, can I, can I get another one? And Colleen was like, that was great, awesome. All right, well, we'll see you next time. <laughs> And so, and I walked away going, oh my God, that was terrible. I was horrible, it was terrible. And then I watched it and it was completely fine. But so things like that will happen. Yeah, they teach you in the theater to leave it on the stage. So it's just a good mental health practice. So I try to leave it in the booth, but it doesn't always stay there. Yeah, most of the second guessing that happens usually happens while you're in, in the room. But, but when you are working, like I, the thing I love about working with Colleen, and it was actually, I didn't realize it was Colleen's birthday the other day when I was up there and she was wearing the same shirt as Monica. Uh, long story. But I, I literally I had a session with Mo, uh, uh, with Colleen and then I left and I saw Monica. I'm like, are you guys wearing the same Wait, shirt? So I took her back in. It wasn't Colleen's even, room. he didn't even say, are you wearing the same shirt? He goes, what is this? <laughs> it's like, what is this club you guys are in and why am I not invited? Uh, but the thing I love about working with Colleen, I think all of us up here would be able, would know what I'm talking about. Like. The thing I love about her is that you really can trust her. Because she's so good. She's such a great actress and she's such a good director. And the thing I love about her is that she doesn't even ever say, I didn't like that. She just goes, Chris, I was, and I and immediately when she starts second guessing it, I go, I know exactly what you're thinking. Right. Like we all know exactly, because we have that same doubt in our mind of like, but we always are leaning on Colleen to go like, is that good or not? The minute she has a doubt, we always, at least I always feel like I know what was wrong with it immediately. Um, right. And it's so, it's great to work with her. You, you all, you all are so lucky that Colleen decides that she is actually going to direct the show because she doesn't have to. She oh. works in house at Funimation. She has a hard job in and of itself. And then she has to actually direct this show. And as a person who is a producer on top of a, director sometimes uh it's a very 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 hard job to do and i i have all the respect for her as well. she's she's amazing i mean she's cast the thing amazing and she continues to direct it in an amazing way um yeah i can't say enough about her, we love her. Yes. <laughs> great question thank you, yeah. thank you hello hi there my name is ricky and i have a question for you guys um I think it goes without saying that My Hero Academia is like really popular, and I'm just curious, like, there are a lot of animes that get released, but I feel like only a select few really reach like a huge amass of popularity, and I'm just wondering, like, in the beginning, did any of you guys think that it was going to be, like, so popular to the scale that it is? Were you prepared for that? I think we, there was a buzz around the studio when the auditions came up. I think everybody knew, like, oh, this is, this is, like, they're acting like this is a big deal. And at the time, if Funimation acted like it was a big deal, it should be a big deal. Um, but I don't think any of us ever thought, because there's always a lot of hype around certain shows, and we never know which ones are going to take off and which ones don't. So you try not to listen to the hype as much and just trust your own feelings and just do the best job you can. Um, but I don't think any of us knew how yeah, big. Fun, Funimation has said this show is probably going to be a hit many, many times. So, so many times. we never really, you never really bank on that at all, except when Chainsaw Man came out, and then everyone freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it's because of the success of My Hero Academia and right. how incredibly successful it was. It's the this is the one show that really has really popped up as big as some of the biggest shows in all of anime. And so I think everyone now sees the potential of what a hit show can be. So when, um, you know, Chainsaw Man auditions went out, I think literally they probably got 250,000 auditions wow. for that show. Yeah, the buzz about that show was unbelievable. Uh, you know, I, I'll say one thing that uh, kind of um, piggybacking on what Monica said. I happen to be in the studio that day to audition. Sometimes we audition, mostly now we audition from our home studios but that was one that I did in person. And speaking of trusting Colleen, she came out and she, she was the one that said to me, you know, this, this has the potential to be, you know, something, you know, bigger. And I think it was because Colleen said it that I was like, oh, okay. 
So all of a sudden I was like completely invested in this audition, you know? It's like, I want this now. Um, but yeah, I don't think we, I don't think, I don't think we knew to the scale uh, that, it's, that it's gotten to. I don't think there was a way to predict that. Justin, you knew though. Oh, I, I know everything. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, how could you have truly predicted the, the, just the sensation that it would end up being? You know, you can say, I think this show's gonna be pretty popular. And that's a vast understatement here. Uh, but the, a lot of the credit goes to the fans and y'all watching, because it's not just my hero that's popular, it's anime. So for it to be a uh, part of this great lineage of, of shows, and even if the, your favorite show is not My Hero Academia, you're a super fan of your favorite show and your favorite character, and that's what is driving everything right now, is that uh, there's a demand and, and uh, y'all are so into it. So I, I think that's the coolest. Like if I were watching My Hero Academia 20 years ago when I was watching Dragon Ball Z and I tried to explain it to my parents, their eyes would roll back into their heads. And now there are families watching it and there are friends watching it online together. And you're making connections that way. So it's like, it's just a very powerful thing. It's a great one. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right, thank you guys great so much. Question. Thank, thank you. you. Hello. You go jam? Hello. Oh, four notes. It's just for the cosplay. I feel like a total fraud. But well, you're, you're, you look you're cool. cosplaying as Guitar Center employee. Thank you. But yeah. Yeah. I'm a very old Guitar Center employee. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, my name's Katie, and I've gotten into voice acting, but I've mostly just been using my regular old voice. And I found it somewhat difficult to find other voices to expand. And I was wondering, how do you guys draw on experiences or anything to create alternative voices from your own? That's a great question. Man, you guys are awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, holy moly. Um, I rely heavily on something that I learned when I was in college theater, and that is vocal placement. I won't go into too much detail, but look that up. Basically what it is is placing your voice in different places. So when I speak naturally, my voice is very nasal. But then like if I do the Bulma voice, it sounds like it's coming from my throat, so that's a completely different placement. And then if I do like Mara Leona, that's coming from my chest, so it's got a different... So it's basically learning those different placements and then adding on, uh, do they have a speech impediment? Like, do they have a cute little lisp? Or do they have an accent? And it's basically like in theater, we call it the actor's tool belt. And you want to have as many tools on that belt as you possibly can. But yeah, vocal placement is huge. Could I make a recommendation to you as a young voice actor? Because if I could go back in time, I would tell myself to do this, but then I wouldn't listen to myself anyway. But uh, I go, yeah, sure. Man, if I could go back in time, like, don't even worry about finding character voices. If you just study accents, you will make a billion dollars. Like. The, the, because the thing that people want more than, like, a way to create a character better than anyone else is just to give them kind of an accent. Um, and if you can do accents well, it is just a shoe-in for getting great work. That's the same even in an on-camera career. Like, if you can do an Eastern European dialect well, you're going to work on, like, six to twelve different television shows. You know, like, so yeah, that's a huge, that's a huge point. I also think that even, even from what both Chris and Monica said, because those are completely, like, right on. It's also just thinking about, like, like that character, and where's that character coming from, and what are they about a bit, and that can inform a placement, or a dialect, or a, do you know? Awesome. Thank you all Great so much. Great question. Thank you. Hello. Um, hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm just wanted to ask a question of, like, how did it feel when you were filming, like when you were um, recording the scene of the fighting to get Aerie and the overhaul? Yeah, oh gosh. I mean, what an amazing season, top to bottom, first of all. Um, I read the manga, so every so often there's a big moment that will happen in the comics that I'm like, oh, the people who are reading this are going to be stoked to see this animated. And I'm the same. Uh, and when those moments come, I really kind of tend to lose myself in them. The music is swelling in my headphones, uh, I hear the, the Japanese track as well, and just the, these big, larger-than-life set pieces. Uh, so yeah, the, the overhaul fight with, with uh, Aerie and the whole, you know, 100% and everything, it was, it was just, uh, I really, you know, I felt a bit of pressure to get it right, but also I, I was just, you know, I was transported as well. So uh, uh, I, I'm always looking for the next kind of big scene like that. Well, you did very good. Oh, stop it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there you go.
It's pretty boring for me. Really. Yeah, <laughs> you did tell me that. Yeah. I mean, it was just not the scene, but like I just didn't have anything to do, so oh, all right. my really? wasn't in it. Hello. Hey. Hi, my name is Monica. Oh, nice name. Monica. That's the, like the best name ever. <laughs> What's your question? My question was, what was it like working together over this game? So, uh, we're gonna let you in on a little secret. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. We record individually. Like, we don't even get to see each other. We see each other more at conventions than we see each other at the studio. Like, so basically, because we have to match the flops and everybody works at a different speed, we each go in individually. That's why a lot of times you'll see us working with the same people over and over again. For instance, Chris and I have been in so many shows opposite each other that now I can almost hear him in my head saying the lines in this Chris voice before I, he's even recorded. So I know how to deliver my lines because I'm like, oh, well, this is how Chris is going to read it or this is how Justin's going to read it or David. So yeah, we have to play a lot of make-believe. But I will say that like getting to know each other over the last six years in the way that we have over this title that means, I think, a lot to us uh, for sure and a lot to all of you has been, I mean, it's been awesome. Uh, the, the, the actors that Colleen has cast and that, that Crunchyroll has you know, approved and, and the people that are working on this show are just like top notch. And so it's, it, you know, we don't work together when we're recording, but um, I think there's a fondness and, and a bond over, over doing such a special show. So, yeah. I mean, if it weren't for the show, I probably wouldn't see you half the time, and I would never hang out with him. Like, yeah, yeah. like so it's actually, it's been a really great thing. Like, I would never hang out with him in real life, but like, because I get to see him in shows so much, it yeah. turns out I actually like him. He's actually Not a really so bad, good guy. Yeah. And you Despite still, what everyone says about him, he's really cool. Yeah. Like, And you would still be sending me like prank mail and tripping me in the hallway. You're right. Yeah. 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 Best prank I ever played. Well, or at least one of them was on Monica. I was like on her birthday one year, and I sent, I sent a text out. Everyone in her phone, and this was pre iPhone, and it was something pretty dirty. But like, uh, and and she couldn't even because it was one of the older phones. She couldn't even reply to everybody to go like it wasn't me because she kept getting so many texts back. It was back anyway. when we had these Razer Nokia phones, oh, yeah. and you had to type each one each time. Oh, you mean like that? Oh God. Yeah. And so I had like 38 different people going, Monica, why did you send this to me, Chris? Oh my God. <laughs> Chris, 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 yes. Great question. Yes. Thank you. Hello. 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 <laughs> Greetings. Hello. My name is Tiano. Awesome. Rhymes with piano. Cool. You know, when your show spikes in popularity, uh, which flooded the internet with what if stories, fan fictions, and AUs, just like Undertale and Naruto. Um, what did you think about um, this unique and creative content that people kind of made up based on the story? And would you like explore some of those stories? Wow, that's deep. I have learned um, when we worked on a little show called Fairy Tale. Um, <laughs> my director was like, hey, whatever you do, don't Google the word Maraxis. So what did I do when I got home? Google. I'm still traumatized. I will say, I love, now everybody's Googling, don't. I will say, uh, I love the creativity. Sometimes some of the things you guys come up with, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Don't know what to do with that. I know uh, you write a lot of fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, let's put on the spot now. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. You should follow my fan fiction Instagram page. Oh. Um, Fifty quirks of gray. That's what it is. <laughs> it's it's at, great. At Down and David on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> it's appreciated, but sometimes a little yeah. too spicy. There you go. It's like a yeah. Video. I mean, I love the inspiration. I love that there's a show that 
that uh, inspires like other creativity, um, I, that's awesome. You know, like that's that's a great impact to have. Uh, but sometimes I go, wow, like when I joined TikTok, um, uh, everyone came out of the woodwork to tell me not to watch. No, and they, you know what was weird? They didn't even talk to me directly. No. I joined and they were like, to all everyone else, oh God, don't let him see this. I'm like, I'm right here. <laughs> this is my pay, I see the comments over and over. And so it's like saying, don't look at the pink elephant. Like, I'm gonna go look at the thing. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Great question. I've been on the internet a long time. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, were born at a very formative age. On the <laughs> internet. And uh, 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 the fandom never ceases to amaze. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm all about it. Like, once the work is done, it belongs to you. So uh, I, I think if, uh, if y'all are exploring and, and kind of uh, taking off tangents from, from there, that's super cool. More, more. Rock on. Thank you. There you, go. Thank you. Yeah, great question. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, piano. <laughs> Hi, I am also Sarah. Hello. Um, and I'm so sorry, Justin and David, that you have to answer this question again. Oh. But um, what's one thing you connect to your character on My Hero Academia with? Um, <laughs> I'm still laughing at calling <laughs> piano. <laughs> I remember um, his name. It's awesome. Uh, What's one thing that we connect to our character on? Yes. The one for me that is always there is um, just kind of, um, <laughs> I'll let you into a little psychology of me, I guess. Just, uh, you know, he's a bit hard on himself. He lives in his head a little bit too long. Um, I can relate to that. I can relate to having really high expectations and being a bit of a perfectionist sometimes and not giving myself a break sometimes. I think Todoroki does that. Um, so I can really relate to that about him. I think for me, it's how much she cares about her friends. I love my friends. That's my chosen family. And so I'm going to stick up for them. And I'm going to do what I, if I have to call somebody out because they're acting like a jerk. I'm going to say, hey, I love you, but you're being a jerk. Um, and I think that that's important. And that's what soon I have. Uh, I was born without superpowers. <laughs> <laughs> Well played. Well played. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And <laughs> see. Thank you. We have got to go. Call TMZ. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, for me, mostly, it's just like, uh, you know, when I first started, I was working 120 hours a week screaming. And now, um, and now I can go about an hour before I, I start spitting up blood as well. So... <laughs> I do love All Might though, because anyone who's a parent can relate to the themes that All Might has going on with Midoriya, and it has made me think a lot about what things I'm passing on to my kids, other than fart jokes. Um, <laughs> and so it's been a, a very eye-opening for me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I've got to be that guy. Oh, no, no. This is, this is the last question. <gasps> but, 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 we're going to do a stage selfie. And everyone that's in line, you guys get first dibs to line up right here oh. in front of the stage. Deal? Yeah. All right. Also, Take us home. We'll be around tomorrow, too. So yes, you guys yes, to absolutely. Yeah, we'll be here tomorrow. Love it. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Michael. This is my first con as well. Hey! hey. Uh, my wife is the super fan in our household. So, Justin, David, she uh, met you guys today, and you made her day and then some. So, oh, nice awesome. Um, my question, maybe kind of off the wall and hopefully easy. Okay. Uh, for each of your respective characters, what would you say is your fav their favorite board game? Oh. <laughs> now you're getting personal. Okay. <laughs> no games. No games. <laughs> on point. On point. <laughs> Does it have to be a board game? Because I'm really more into the video games. That's fair. Frogger! <laughs> My people! Oh, man. Uh, do you have one? Do you, are, you, are you still thinking? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, darn it. There's so Sorry. many good board games. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying, uh, uh, hungry, Hungry Hippo. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, 
I just want to think of board games all, now, just in general. All Might's favorite game would be a game called Forgotten Waters, made by Plaid Hat Games, which I'm just doing a pitch for right now. <laughs> because if you buy that game, you will hear probably all of our voices in it. It's a, it's a board game, it's like an RPG type game about a pirate ship, and you're on a pirate ship, and it has this, uh, this interactive audio element. So instead, they, it used to be this one of these ships that, like one of these gate ships. Oh, don't talk about ships. Uh, it used to be one of those games where you had like a huge book and somebody had to read it as it was going on, but they've added this, call it choose your own adventure, massive uh, audio book element to it. I would highly recommend it, Forgotten Waters. Yeah, I've been diving into the world of board games lately. I gotta admit, I've been playing some cool stuff. Um, I'm still a bit of a novice, but my mind for Deku goes to one of those extremely like overcomplicated games. Like I've been playing a game called Everdell lately. Really? No way, no way. All right, all right, I see you. Um, and it's it's one of those that's like the first pass through the game is very stumbly and like I don't know what's happening. Is it over yet? Are we done? And now I can, I'm at the point where I can explain every single phase of the game. And if you're, wait, 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 you're doing that wrong. Don't you want to do this in, in this order so that for optimal sort of uh, resource management? And uh, yeah, yeah. I could actually see Midoriya playing the My Hero Academia card game, and that's not hey, because all right. that is exactly what you just described. <laughs> it's like playing poker and calculus at the same time. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank Wanna you. come over and play some calculus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> guys, you can't make some noise one time. Thank you guys. We've got a photographer coming up stage. Everybody that's in line right now is welcome.